Hello everybody, this is Ashfaq Alam. I am the Electronics Instrumentation Engineer uh, here at WSS, Water Software System in D. Mountford University. And uh, uh, I'm being assisted by my colleague, Mr. Samir Ghos, uh, who's taking this video currently. Um, today I'm basically going to give you an initial uh, tutorial about uh, how to use the D-Space Control System. What D-Space Control System is, uh, it's basically a high performance control system which um, helps to control um, any like big uh, plants, uh, maybe uh, in the automation industry and things like that. For our instance, we are basically uh, using that uh, D-Space Control System into uh, this wastewater plant you can see here. We are going to control and automate this uh, whole wastewater plant using the D-Space Control System. Uh, let me uh, tell you a bit about what D-Space Control System is, is at first. Um, the few more components that I'll basically have to show you is uh, first this is uh, called ECU, the uh, electronic control unit. Uh, you can see it's written D space over here, it's uh, the name of the company basically. So this ECU um, is the processing unit mainly and uh, this is uh, the uh, like control system from where you're, be you're basically receiving and um, sending signals. When you're receiving and sending signals from and to uh, this uh, ECU using um, this DSC and ADC boards you can see. The DSC board you can see is uh, basically for transmitting signal from the DSpace um, ECU to some uh, device maybe to the plant in our case or to some other device if you want to. So the reason we are using the DSC board here because um, this space it's basically sending digital signal but your device does not understand digital signal that is the reason it needs to be converted into analog and that is why we are using this digital to analog conversion board which is the DSC board here. And uh, the vice versa for uh, the AD board here, which is the analog to digital uh, conversion board, I believe you can understand this is for receiving the signal because um, the signal which is going to be received from any of these uh, physical devices are going to be analog and uh, our computer it doesn't understand analog, that is the reason it's getting converted into digital, so we are using this ADC board for receiving signal. And uh, in order to design the whole control system to make an algorithm for it, uh, what we're using is uh, Simulink. It's uh, the MATLAB Simulink basically. It, is, it comes under the MathWorks MATLAB software. And we're making this model using Simulink. And the Simulink is going to set the algorithm for the d space control system as you've already seen. So to initiate with the designing, We'll first have to launch the MATLAB here. Let's double click on the MATLAB button here. So it's coming up. So at the very first instance, it's going to ask you what real time interface is installed for um, this design. So let me just tell you first, you'll basically have to turn the DSpace system on at the very first uh, moment where uh, you're starting designing the system. And it is turned on as you can see, though the LED is not working for some reason, but it is perfectly fine. Uh, the system is working here. And it is uh, called the RTI106. Uh, and the real-time interface 106, uh, it's being selected here as I've uh, clicked on it and we are waiting for it to be configured. Uh, it is saying that it has been configured and all the MATLAB toolboxes and Simulink blocks are installed for the RTI 106, 006, sorry. So at first we are launching the Simulink here and the Simulink library browser has come up and we are starting a new design here. So first we are going to send a signal as um, we have already 
told you that the first experiment is going to be sending a simple signal to some devices and uh, as for our case we are using a multimeter to receive that signal so the uh, multimeter is going to be the device that we are sending the signal from the um, this space control system so uh, let me just uh, show you the multimeter here so this is the multimeter and the signal we are going to send from the disk space it is going to appear here in the screen so that we can uh, see the voltage we are sending it is coming the signal we are sending it is coming up and it's getting transmitted basically so for doing that we are basically sending like taking one constant block and this constant block is basically changeable once you double click on it you can change the constant value so for we are putting 5 it will basically send 5 volt and uh, we're saying okay here now what we need is we are assigning this constant to be sent but why are we are sending it we are sending it as i have already explained we are sending it to the dsc board and uh, the dsc board for the dsc board we have got a different library here at simulink as we have already found out that we are using the rti1006 core so the library is appearing here as you can see and the number of our dsc board is let me show you here is ds2103 so let me find out ds2103 over here there you go we can see the ds2103 so this is where we are sending the signal we are dragging and dropping it and there it is now let me tell you an important thing which is the DSC board whenever it receives a signal it divides each and every signal uh, sorry it multiplies each and every signal by 10 so whatever you're basically sending from here so if you're sending 5 volt from here whenever the signal is getting out from the DSC it is going to be 50 volt and you don't want 50 volt to be into your device you might burn it so that is the reason what you are doing is you are going to divide this signal that you are sending by 10 so that whenever it reaches the digital to analog conversion board and it is coming out of the board it is going to be 5 volt anyway the exact voltage that you are sending so for doing that we are using a gain and for the gain we are getting to the commonly used block we are putting a gain here and we are not using 1 we are using 0 0.1 that means it is going to be multiplied by 0 0.1 or in other word it is going to be divided by so we are connecting this block with this and we are connecting this block with this oops sorry uh -oh. yeah all the loops very weird let me just do it again uh, yeah there you go okay so now what we'll have to do is saving so this is this is the uh, very simple model of sending a signal from the disk space to some other um, device oh one thing i forgot which is as you can see there are many channels inside the dsc board let me just show you here here in the dsc board you have got 32 different channels so on the simulink block here once you double click on the simulink block you see it is coming up as the 32 channels so you can see all these 32 channels over here and for 
R instance, therefore we are using the channel number 13. And we are saying OK. And we are going to save the model. The model is being saved. Uh, let me name it as uh, transmit. transmit underscore test and save it so it has been saved already now what we'll have to do is we'll have to generate the description file which is called sdf and for generating the description file we will have to build the model first and for building the model simply what we'll have to do is we'll have to press ctrl and b together once you press Ctrl and B, you can see it has started configuring. So it is coming up. So the model is being built. Generating all the C files. And you see it is loading application to the transmit test. Sorry, I've misspelled it here. Anyway, so this is the installation complete and the process is succeeded, you can see. So we have generated successfully the SDF file, which is the description file that we need. And this description file will give you, not you, it will give the DSpace control system the algorithm which it needs to transmit the signal to the device we want and now what we need is getting to the DSpace control desk which is the graphical user interface for the DSpace system we have and this is where we are importing that SDF file the description file so that the DSpace system it understands what algorithm it will have to follow and for doing that we are once it is open this control desk environment is open all we will have to do is click on new project plus experiment click on it so far we are naming it as um, again transmit saying next the experiment is experiment number one maybe and then saying next again these are all fine we're saying next again now we are going to import the SDF file it is giving us that opportunity of importing it so let's click on import and it has straight away taken us to the MATLAB directory and we are going to find out the SDF file that we have generated as you remember the name of that SDF file was transmit so it will be somewhere here transmit.sdf as you can see so let's click on the transmit underscore test it was supposed to be test dot SDF and click open so it has been imported already now we say finish so we have imported successfully the SDF file. Now what we'll have to do is uh, we'll have to assign some of these instruments to transmit the signal. And for transmitting the signal, let's take a bar. Other than using bar, we can take something else. Not bar, sorry. Not bar. Let's take a slider. We're taking a slider so that we can slide and see how much voltage we're sending transmitting let's see now now this is one block we have uh, just one instrument we have just imported here now this instrument doesn't really know how it is like with which block it is going to be working with it is going to be connected with so that is what we will have to do we will have to tell 
this instrument that you will basically have to take part of some of these blocks or one of these blocks and for our case as we know that the only signal that we are inputting is this the constant we are only changing this nothing else we are changing we are going to keep it as it is so we will have to connect this block this constant block with the instrument that we have imported here for doing that we will have to link it and for linking it all we will have to do is get into the variables here you will see the SDF file is shown click on the plus sign go to the model root and you know the block you are going to connect it with the instrument here is the constant block so the constant block is here once you click on that you see the constant block is showing here all you will have to do is click on it hold it drag it and drop it on top of the instrument here and it has been connected it has been connected you can see it is showing that signal that it has been connected now all you will have to do is just take a look if any of these cores are already assigned it is showing that one core is already assigned so as because the cores are randomly selected you never know once you are going to write the program on the core it might try to write it on the same core that is already in something else so it has been working on something else already if you want to write it on top of it it's not going to work so you'll have to make sure all the cores are stopped so to stop any of the cores you'll have to right click on the one which is running and click on stop RTP so it has been closed so it has been stopped so all these cores you can see one two three four all these cores are now stopped none of these are running so this is the time we can run we can calibrate the whole design that you're looking for so let's calibrate it now what we can do this is calibrated already you can see it is calibrating what we can do we can change the instrument properties by clicking right clicking on it so for instrument property what we can do is we can assign a minimum range and maximum range say for we are taking a minimum range as 0 and a maximum range as 10 let's not deal with that high temperature like that high voltage so we are just dealing with 0 to 10 now what we will have to do move to the device we are using to receive that signal so we are sending this this voltage to this multimeter and for doing that we are basically using a bayonet nail connector here this is called BNC bayonet nail connector and as you remember we have selected channel number 13 so what we will have to do we will just have to connect this bayonet nail collector connector to the channel number 13 so let's connect it here So, as you can see, let me just show you this. Now, what is happening? It is set at 5 volt and it is sending almost 5. It is not se sending exactly 5, maybe because of some instrumental error inside, but it is basically sending 5 volt over here, you can see. Now, let's change it. Let's decrease it. As you can see once you're decreasing it the voltage on the multimeter is decreasing as well it is decreasing and once you are increasing it it is increasing as well so once you settle on 7 it is sending almost 7 in fact 7 basically and so on so forth so this is how 
you can simply send a signal using the D space control system to some device assigned. So other than using the multimeter, you can use it for a pump, a motor, maybe a big plant or something like that to turn it on and turn it off. And other than sending just one signal, you can send near about 32 signals as we have got 32 different channels over here as you've already seen. And you have got even bigger digital to analog converter system. So you can buy those signals, like buy those systems and you can uh, basically send signals more than 32. So this is how basically you send a signal using the D-Space control system to some of the signed device. Thank you very much for watching.